Good afternoon and welcome to our uh, first professional development uh, session for this semester. And um, in order to get us kicked off to a really amazing start, we are delighted to share today's session with uh, two of our, uh, our, well, I shall I uh, include all the superlatives I usually use or just say are two I'm, it is my pleasure to introduce you to two absolutely amazing library uh, reference people that are going to start us off with some of the resources that are available to us through the library. We have with us this morning Rachel New and Lori Rebar so I'm going to let them um, take over. Thank you so much Judy. Um, Let's go ahead and get our slides started. Thank, Thank you. you. We have a brand new setup here that I am just getting used to. Um, so we have, um, if you're interested uh, while you're viewing, we have something called a Padlet and the URL is padlet.com slash R-N-E-U slash L-I-B F is in Frank, A, V, E, S. And that's just a place where uh, you could chime in about your favorite library, FAU library's resource or service um, as a faculty member. So I don't know if y'all want me to pick, bring that up or just let people post things and then we will take a look later. We can do it either way, saying. whatever works best for you. If, we, if they can want to go ahead and make some comments and posts as we're going through, that's fine. Otherwise, we can get back to it afterwards. Okay, I think that's good. You know our names, Rachel and Lori. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward through our slides. Okay, so you're identifying your favorite services and resources. And so we're gonna talk about the challenges of being a faculty member who might be a little bit busy um, trying to accomplish everything and its brother, um, getting everything planned, your, your courses, your curriculum, your syllabi, um, grading, um, trying to fit in all of the content that you need to cover um, during the course of the semester. And then on top of that, there are little things that students need to be aware of in order to be successful um, in your classes um, that relate to either the library or other services and resources that you're constantly trying to weave in. Um, so it's a lot, right? Okay, so how can the library help? So there are three primary ways. Um, we can support you with your research, obviously. Um, we can support you with uh, plagiarism prevention and student success. Um, and we can help reduce library anxiety um, and save time both for you and your students. Okay, so first of all, supporting your research. Um, you, you know, may at some point want to um, consult with a librarian, whether it be an email using our Ask a Librarian service or even scheduling um, a consultation over the phone or online or if you're local coming in in person. Um, you pick your poison. Um, the idea is that um, we want to be able to be available to help you and make sure that you know um, what is available to you and we can listen to what your needs are um, and give you the best information for navigating uh, the resources and services that we have based on those needs so that if you know you haven't used um, our databases in a while or you want to just make sure that um, you're learning about what we have say with streaming video or any new databases um, that you're making the best use of those in your research um, and saving yourself some time. So along those lines. Can I make a um, note here? Please. One of the items says navigating the library's homepage. Our homepage is going to be changing pretty soon. Yes. And so we're certain we're going to have a lot of questions. So it should be very easy to navigate. We're making it streamlined. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully a much easier to navigate uh, website. I'm guessing with not as many overwhelming links all on the one page. Yeah. Um, so I do have here um, a screenshot of our current um, homepage 
and you can see circled in red are the top three places you, you would go if, say, you were doing research for yourself and trying to access our databases and resources. Um, and then we have a couple of other colors for highlighting our services, whether it be Ask a Librarian, um, our lib guides, our, our, our subject guides, and our course guides, um, and uh, what have you, interlibrary loan. But something uh, new that we'd like to highlight, um, we have a, a relatively new director of scholarly communications and um, her department, um, her name is Jane Stradwick and her department has um, a new slate of workshops geared to faculty, um, which include topics such as predatory publishers, um, managing your scholarly footprint, um, demonstrating research impact, um, and uh, that includes finding metrics and um, going beyond the impact factor uh, to include alt metrics and social media. So we've got that available on this slide, which you can access later as well as um, through our homepage. Okay, so second of all, uh, supporting course development. Um, our spring semester is underway and we are getting fast into the thick of it, I'm sure. Um, and so this is a pretty busy time and um, there are different uh, resources that we have available to you. You can uh, schedule library instruction sessions. Um, if you have a class in person, um, you can um, work with us, whether it be in the middle of the semester or maybe later on, uh, you know, preparing for, say, the fall semester. Um, you can work with us to design library friendly research assignments. Um, you can also work with us to get your textbooks, which we know are very expensive, um, on course reserves um, and, you know, help with getting your resources embedded into Canvas. And we've got some great new tools for that. Yeah. Would you like to say a word about those tools? Well, we have one which is uh, Credo Information Literacy. We'll talk about that a little later. And we also have another new one called Curriculum Builder, which is great because you're able to actually pull things in directly from the library into your class. Good stuff. Sounds exciting. It is. Anything we can do to make life easier, right? Um, so supporting course development, um, you can see on the current library's homepage um, on the toolbar under services. Um, if you are going to schedule an instruction session, um, if you actually have, if you're local and have an in-person class, um, that is fairly easy to do. Did you know that we're actually looking into being able to do the online classes too? I know, it's so exciting. We're testing out uh, doing online workshops mm -hmm. this semester, so. Oh, excellent. Yes, that's good. So, in an ideal world, um, your students would know how to avoid plagiarizing. Um, they would have all of the research skills that they need to successfully complete your assignments. Um, and their writing skills would be awesome. Uh, we know that in reality, there are a lot of gaps between where we want and need our students to be in terms of of, you know, even just basic things like grammar, much less um, research skills and um, what have you. Um, so we know that there are skills they're not always picking up to the extent that we would like, right? And not everybody has time to remediate those skills. Um, it, once upon a time, you know, students had to come into the library in person and get the resources. We didn't have Google. And there were, there were a lot of things that you could take for granted. Um, and now we can't you know, do that. So we're very acutely aware at the library of how busy you all are and how difficult, how, how challenging it is to help your students get up to speed um, without um, extending yourself too much. So one thing that we've come up with uh, that can help, um, there is something called the icebreaker assignment. Um, because 
you might have um, times where maybe you require very little in the way of outside sources just to avoid that quagmire of getting um, all sorts of inappropriate sources. Um, and then you may have other times where you assign a full research paper and you just don't have time to um, get those skills up to speed. Um, but one thing that you could do if, if you're able and maybe think about this for the fall semester um, is to give a little mini assignment at the very beginning of the semester where you have them choose a topic, um, get one book or research article, um, cite it properly in whatever style you're using in that class, and maybe annotate that source um, and demonstrate their quoting and paraphrasing skills a little bit so that you can very quickly, hopefully without too much extra grading, um, get a snapshot of where your students are in your class um, before things get too far along and then they've got those big papers. Okay, and so this, this next slide just kind of shows an example of that. You know, we're all familiar with an annotated bibliography and what that looks like, but it's the kind of thing that you can show to your students so they understand as well. Um, so we, one thing that we have is um, our faculty resources and services guide. It is chock full of um, information for faculty and oftentimes um, most of the questions that you might have um, regarding services to, you know, especially yourselves with your own research or just involving the library in some way into your courses um, should be in there somewhere. Um, so we highly recommend taking a look at that when you have a chance. Um, and the URL for that is going to be uh, libguides.fau.edu slash faculty dash VOCA. I'm sorry. Uh, slash. No, dash. Uh, Lisa would like to, like to know if there are any workshops available remotely. Um, right. We are actually um, working on our very first one, a test um, this Thursday. And so assuming that that would work, we're going to be checking to see if we can do them, one, remotely, and two, have them be um, recorded so that people could get to them afterwards. So is the one Thursday going to be available? The one can we send can we send out the link? Uh, yes. OK, so you'll let us know can and we'll we, send it out. Can we get Lisa's email address? I'll, I'll take care of getting okay. it. OK, I'll, I'll just I'll put it in the in our the workshop. Lisa's in our e-certification workshop, so I can if you don't mind, I'll just send it out that way. Please do. I'd Thank love you. to. And it's easy also if you're at the library. Well, the current library's homepage to take a look and see where our workshops are. Okay. There's a, a separate link for that. Yes. OK, so our third piece of the puzzle is supporting student research. Um, we all want our students to be as successful as possible. Um, one little acronym to just highlight a few of our services. Um, Chow um, or C I A out or oh, <laughs> <laughs> ow. no. Um, consultations with students. Um, we can hold consultations with students both in person and um, by phone or by Google Hangout. Um, and we have a couple other yeah. things. If people don't like Google Hangouts, we have a few other tricks up our sleeve. Absolutely. We're <laughs> flexible. The idea is, you know, whatever format is needed. Yeah. Um, we're available for the students. So if you have um, a student who um, needs some extra assistance um, and um, hand holding, perhaps um, they can meet with us. You know, maybe they have a big project or a big paper and they're struggling finding enough resources um, that are relevant to their topic or narrowing their topic down appropriately um, or what have you. Um, they can meet with us one on one. Um, through a research consultation, and those can be requested through our homepage. Um, we also have interlibrary loans. So if there is ever a resource that we do not have in the library or online through our online resources, um, students can request those. Um, and we have an excellent um, interlibrary loan department. When you say an item, are you talking like a book or a journal article? Yes, um, a book, sorry, a book. You know, when you work in the library for a few years, you get used to lingo that, um, like, like item. Um, 
So um, whether it be a book or a journal article, a dissertation, um, a trade publication, um, case report, any of those many different types of uh, resources that somebody might need. Um, generally, what we like to say with interlibrary loan is it's not if, but when. Um, so, you know, if your paper is due tomorrow, um, you know, you might have trouble getting the resource that you need. But if you give us a little bit of a heads up, um, we can get almost anything that you might need if we don't already own it or have access to it. And which would we get in faster, the journal article or the book, do you think? I think the journal, journal article. article. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. Um, so we have consultations, interlibrary loan. We have ask a librarian. So again, um, speaking of tailoring to the student need, um, if you need assistance or a student needs assistance, um, they can email us, chat with us, text us, call us, and of course come in and see us in person if they live locally. Um, so again, um, however is going to work best for the student, you know, if you have a really short question, um, texting can often be just the trick, but um, for longer questions where we're walking students through a process of accessing something or troubleshooting access to an article or what have you, then probably chat or phone um, or email might work better. And that's that's available five nights out of the week until midnight. Um, and it's also it's available seven days out of the week and it's a free service. Yes. If we are not available personally as an FAU librarian, somebody else within the state would be able to assist and they also have access to all of our information so they can assist a student with our resources. Exactly. So lots of help available when your students um, are running into challenges, um, accessing the resources that they need for their assignments. And of course, OWL cards for distance learners. Um, and uh, we also have a, a resource guide specifically for distance learning students. And we will probably highlight that a little bit later. Can I ask that the OWL card, is that also the library card? Yes. OK, so if somebody is a distance learner and they want to be able to access library materials, they need to make sure that they have an OWL card. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to access those materials. This is true. And of course, um, I think when I added that to these slides originally, um, I don't know, maybe we weren't using the FAU Net ID to log in remotely at that point. And of course, now having your FAU Net ID allows you to do that. So I don't know how core it is for students to have they the OWL have card. Have, they still have to have it because their okay. OWL card has to be activated. Ah, uh, right. So activate those OWL cards. OK, so we can refresh your research skills as a faculty member. Um, we can share and model best practices, um, embed library resources into Canvas and help you to do so. Um, without violating any, you know, copyright, copyright <laughs> issues. Um, we don't want that. Um, and of course, that's a little bit different online than it has been in the in-person classroom. Um, but uh, we can also help you successfully encourage student use of the library um, so that your life is easier and uh, help prevent plagiarism. So Rachel, maybe this would be a good time to go back to the Padlet and see what comments are in there. I think that's a great idea. Okay, uh, in the meantime, Lisa has a question. Okay. Uh, she says, I understand that with an FAU Net ID, I have access to the site, but I am wondering if staff slash faculty need an OWL card to access anything. You're going to need an OWL card to be able to borrow materials from the library. As far as online items, um, you have to activate your OWL card, which is as simple as either borrowing materials from the library or asking at the service desk for your OWL card to be activated. And once that is done, then you have access using your FAU Net ID and password to our online resources like ebooks and online journal articles. So, yes, that uh, OWL card is a required item because that has to be activated. And that allows you then to password in and authenticate yourself as an FAU uh -huh. student, faculty, or staff member. And there's a second question. Is there a specific guide for embedding resources in Canvas that they'd like to have? Um, there, the best way or the easiest way is actually going into Canvas 
for their instructions, their tutorials, because it's very easy and they always have everything up to date. We do also have some information um, directly in the faculty resource guide. And um, of course, if there are any questions, just go ahead and contact the library. Um, if you're checking and you're saying, I don't know who to contact, Reference Desk or Rachel, myself, um, we may not always be at our desk, but the reference office. Um, I said reference desk. We don't have a reference desk. No. We have a reference office. Um, okay. So let's take a quick peek at our Padlet. So we've got feedback about um, reaching out to us a lot and appreciating our services and um, using our libguides and our streaming videos, um, streaming video databases and course reserves. Course reserves are very helpful. Um, and we're hoping that as faculty have extra copies of things, uh, their textbooks, they may be able to put those on reserve mm -hmm and allow their students, especially those who are really having those financial problems, being able to get the textbooks, uh, be able to borrow them. That means when it's on course reserve, they borrow it for use only in the library, and it's only for a designated time, like one hour or three hours. So it does not go outside the library. Yeah. If, it's, it's, if it's being borrowed in person. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are, there are tools or resources that can be placed on reserve online. So, you know, research right. articles can be shared online, mm -hmm. ebooks yes. can be shared online as well. Um, but yes, if, Excellent. if a faculty member has um, an extra copy of their textbook and can let the uh, library use it for course reserves, that is most appreciated. Okay, I'm gonna pop back over to the library's homepage. And um, if you are looking at the same thing, um, I would like you to notice on the left hand side under quick links um, down the way about halfway or more. Uh, we have our subject guides and our course guides. If you were to go into course guides. Subject guides. Is or sort of subject guides. guides. I'm clicking on <laughs> subject guides and yeah, subject guides. Um, watch what I do. Don't listen to what I say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so subject guides. And then you scroll down a little bit and you're going to see um, a category called faculty guides. Oh, I like that. Right. And we've got a whole slew of them for our, our wonderful faculty um, on credo information literacy, which Lori is going to give a little teaser about um, citation tools, distance learning, um, and of course our, our general faculty resources and services. Guide. The distance learning guide, am I correct? That includes both information for faculty and for students? Yes. Um, and so if I open up the faculty resources and services guide, and I can go back and go into that as well. Okay. We've got all kinds of things popping up when we try to get into that tab. Um, so under the faculty resources guide, um, we have information about, um, you know, just general links to information, information about um, the different campuses, um, but also links to resources. So if you want to link to library resources, um, say within Canvas, we have um, a short guide that explains how you might go about um, doing that and avoiding copyright issues. So linking to a book in the catalog or an ebook or a database or a journal or a specific article, exactly. all of that is covered. Exactly. Um, so we've got instructions for each, you know, of those, uh, but the most common types of resources that you might want to link to in your class. Um, and for, you know, doing that can be very helpful because you're directing students directly to a library resource. Um, you can also work with us if you want to um, have the student, if you don't even want to link to the source, if you want to just make it easier for students to navigate things on their own, but you'd like us to provide instructions that um, kind of bridge that gap a little bit, um, you could always reach out to us and, and get that as, from us as well. Um, can I explain your, your assignment? Yes. Can I click on this one? 
Canvas in the library? Please do. Okay, so what we're doing is embedding materials. That was one of the questions and embedding links. So we're going ahead and we're talking about being able to embed the URL and linking to an entire resource guide. Um, also, even if somebody's not requesting an instructional class, they could request a research guide be prepared for their class. That's right. So that's pretty neat. Um, and then we have the information down here, so it's very easy for them to get to the Canvas help, which we know is going to be up to date. Yes. And we're also working on putting in some additional information about the library within the Canvas tour for instructors and for students. Oh, excellent. Yeah, OIT has asked us to be able to Good. provide that, so that will be coming along too. And also, if you look along here in the resources in Canvas, it will, one of these clicks uh, takes you to the library's homepage. So the little folder icon on the left side. I believe side. that's the, the folder icon which takes you to resources. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So um, we're trying. Yes. Could you um, go back to that list of faculty guides? Yes, I would love to. So I kept that up. Um, can I show one of my favorites here? Please do. <laughs> Library DIY do-it-yourself guide. This is something that we did, it's kind of like looking at a Jeopardy board. So if a student has questions or if a professor has questions, I need to start my research, pick a topic, whatever. So you can go here, click, and now you're going to get, okay, how can we narrow this down to what it is that you really need? You need to find out about selecting ter terms or keywords for your searching. Okay, now we give you information. Oh, what's this down here? There's even a tutorial that's on a video platform that's embedded in here. And we have a lot of links in here too to be able to direct people. So you can browse over here on the left. Everything is listed there. You could take a look at the site map and you could go from there if you wanted. Everything is listed here. Or you could start at that home page because it's much more fun to click on something like this. Um, but this is a great resource for students um, I think as they are looking for something and they are kind of caught, they don't know where to go and who to talk to. Um, so this is a great way for them to get some assistance. And we also have a give us your feedback. If you have comments or want to see additional things put in there, we can do that. Absolutely. So please give us your feedback about this resource and, um, you know, certainly link to this and uh, give you your students a chance to navigate it and see how it helps them. Um, what if they don't know which guide they want to look at? Can they use the search box? Absolutely. Um, if you, you know, vaguely remember a few weeks from now that there was a thing called the faculty guide and somehow you get yourself to this page, um, but you don't remember what category it's in, um, you could just say uh, faculty, oops, Probably spelling things correctly. Just do a search for faculty. Um, or if you remember DIY. Oh, it picked up a period instead of I, an L. Yeah, my fingers are not walking too well today. Um, Why don't you try APA? Oh, or mm -hmm. DIY, either one. Yes, APA is a great one. Our APA I'll do that boot camp, one. we even have a Chicago style boot camp and uh, LA. Yeah, has been rolled out now. That's right. So I'm, I'm going to have to take a look at that. So Chicago. Oh, Chicago shows up in the citations guide. And also you can see um, art and art history <laughs> are using the Chicago style uh, for some of their classes. So lots of different ways to be able to find information. And this search history. is when they put something in the search it searches by word. So you'll see it's highlighted that word Chicago wherever it's found it within a guide. Yeah, we have a lot of guides where they have a page that provides information about Chicago style. Yeah. I'm not seeing the guide for, for Chicago style per se. Oh, it's in citations. Right oh, there. okay. I thought it had, it was a guide. No. Itself. So if we go to the tab then, Here's one for APA, MLA, now we go to Chicago, and it gives us information about the manual itself, and it also gives us some of the best loves, those little hearts, those are the ones we'd go to first. 
<laughs> and um, web resources for you and for your students. Um, of course, one of our favorites is the Owl at Purdue. We like love it. that, don't you? Don't yeah. you just love the Owl at Purdue? And everybody uses it. It's, it's everybody's first go to after a PA boot camp. That's right. <laughs> Um, and speaking of APA boot camp, I'll show you the quickest way to get to that. Um, if you are back on the library's homepage, let me actually just go straight to that. Um, if you actually go to um, course guides, I really mean it this time. Um, if you click on course guides rather than subject guides, we have it set so that the very oh, first, the first one, one. <laughs> right there, front and center. And we are doing um, an APA boot camp workshop tomorrow for those who are local and on campus. Um, that's January 30th, 2018. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yes. Okay. What Lori just said. Um, so uh, this is our, our resource guide for the APA boot camp that we offer. And my favorite place to go. Um, on this very first tab or page of this guide in the center, the first um, link or file, if you open that up, APA Bootcamp citation style checklist. Um, mm -hmm. We've got the checklist, but as you scroll down, um, we have a little worksheet that students can fill out to just make sure that their understanding of the parts to a journal article reference is on point. Um, but as you go uh, a little bit further, um, we have a page for each different type of resource. So um, whether you're trying to, to um, uh, cite books or journal articles or other types of resources, multimedia or what have you, um, there is a page for each different type of source and it explains how to um, give your reference as well as your in-text citation. So it's a nice quick cheat sheet, so to speak. And it's the thing that I refer to the most often um, when I speak with students outside of our workshops. What's really nice is we have some professors, like I know in um, college uh, working with social work, I taught a social work class today and then I did the next hour an APA boot camp because social work students have to be able to pass a particular um, test. And so they needed that. So we can even do the workshops as a class uh, for a particular instructor. Absolutely. So we, we give it as a, a workshop um, in the library once, you know, a couple of times a semester. Um, but we have um, a few professors who will make a point of scheduling it for their class in addition to a regular instruction session. Okay. To, uh, go back to the PowerPoint so we can uh, get Ab our teaser. Absolutely. Is, that one? is the boot camp going to be virtual as well as a question? Um, we are hoping so. Assuming that um, our test for this works out, then yes, we will be recording the boot camp. I'm not Up at the top sure where to go to find my slides. slides. Oh, sure. uh, I, I put it in there for you. Then. Where do I stop? Yeah. Stop right here. Ah, put it in on mine. Stop. That would make sense. And then where do we go? Top left. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Okay. So we had our handy dandy summary, and uh, now we're going on to a few resource guides: our distance learning, our faculty, our library assignments guide. Um, a few relatively new ones, including the DIY guide, um, our scholarly communications program, and our research support guide. So that research support guide is fairly new too, and it includes uh, links to some of the scholarly communications, also some of the faculty information. It's the research support is specifically for faculty and graduate students. Yes. Ah, Credo Information Literacy. So, Credo, we actually own this. Um, it's not just a subscription, Yay. but it's one we own. 60 high quality videos, tutorials, and quizzes. These are quizzes that you can bring into Canvas and use in your classes, and they will go directly into your gradebook. We can help you uh, go ahead and put those together. There are pre-tests, a 
20 question pretest, a 20 question post test. Most of the quizzes are just five um, questions. And the pre and post test will cover basically all the material that's within the credo information literacy. And you're saying, what in the world are we looking at? Well, the modules are going to be something you can use to supplement the lessons that you already have been presenting and also to address some gaps that you may find in your classroom or your online teaching. And so information literacy is all about being able to find information, being able to evaluate information, and being able to use information. So that's basically what the Credo Information Literacy is working with. Um, it also is made so that it authenticates for student access, and that's built right in. Since FAU owns it, only FAU students, faculty, and staff can get access to it. It is an online uh, item. And it is ADA compliant, so we have uh, transcripts that you'll see on the side and a lot of other features. You want to go to the next slide. I've got a little more information about it. Um, again, I mentioned you can have your quiz grades go directly to your gradebook. Instructors can self-enroll so that they can access the materials directly at the Credo uh, InfoLit Canvas course. Um, go there, and if you have any questions, um, this is Lori speaking. Um, I'm one of the prime people for you to go ahead and ask questions. Um, you'll see we have some guides, and these are again lib guides. We have one that's just Credo um, that gives you access actually to all of the uh, items, but it doesn't put them into your Canvas course for you, so we'll work with you to do that. And also this uh, Credo Comp, these are some additional resources that you might want to know about that are going to cover a lot of the features. So what is covered? It's how to find a topic, how to narrow a topic, it's going to be the citations, it's going to be plagiarism, a lot of different things. Um, like I mentioned, 60 different items in there. And you can also take a quick look. There's a two minute video at the very bottom view Credo Info Lit video for faculty. And that's just a short two minute video that will give you a lot of just background and what it's all about. That was fast. Yeah, that was fast. <laughs> and what a, a resource filled time we have shared today. So just so that uh, you know, if you're if you're watching online, we will be sending uh, information out um, later on this afternoon, and I will connect with uh, Lori and Rachel to make sure we get everything sent out that you have had access to today. So thank you so much for joining us and being being our our guest speakers for today. Thank you. Well, thank you for thank inviting you. us. Yes, and thank you. Are there any other me. questions or comments that anyone wants to Add or share or ask before we uh, before we wrap it up. And we do appreciate our audience, our online audience. They are asking questions. Yes, yeah, we have quite a few, uh, quite a few online today. So that's great. We appreciate everybody being willing to join. You weren't able to get in online, but you joined us in here. So. Uh, so that's uh, that's super. We have uh, we are uh, we are rocking and rolling. We've got quite a quite a tech team in here getting us everything uh, organized and set up for us. So if there's uh, no other questions, and we'll we'll say thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And uh, we will be back same time next week. I think we have. Um, accessibility is our topic for next week, I believe. So thank you.